東京火を消せ東京オリンピック反対何やったのよ <laughs> Organizers of the Tokyo Olympics have announced a total ban on spectators. It follows a new state of emergency declared in the Japanese capital due to rising coronavirus infections. Foreign fans were already barred. Now Japanese spectators are being told to stay at home. The Games will be the first in Olympic history to be held behind closed doors. Protesters that were here are angry that the Games are going to go ahead in the middle of a state of emergency as COVID cases are once again surging in Tokyo, reaching the highest level in months. And as experts continue to warn against hosting these Games, even the Prime Minister just moments ago saying that more cases are being driven by the Delta variant in Japan. Is it time to cancel the Olympics? It's a question on a lot of people's minds these days, and if it isn't on yours, it probably should be. I'm Caroline Johnson, thanks for watching. On Wednesday, Japan declared a state of emergency due to the uptick in coronavirus cases and ruled in an unprecedented decision that no spectators will be allowed at the Olympics. This massive declaration signals that it's time to grapple more fully with the question of ethics behind going forward with the Games. Tokyo reported 920 new COVID cases this Wednesday, the most since May 13th, and the highest case amount for the 18th straight day. Japan's National Institute of Infectious Diseases finds under the most optimistic scenario, new COVID cases in Tokyo could reach 1,000 a day in July and 2,000 in August. More than 11,000 competitors are expected to travel to Japan to compete, along with thousands of officials and staff. Add to that the fact that the nation has faced a relatively slow rollout of vaccine. According to Reuters, only about a quarter of the population has had at least one COVID-19 shot. NBC is desperately holding on to the Olympics moving forward, and not just out of a spirit of the games mentality. In 2014, the media giant and the International Olympic Committee agreed to a $7.5 billion media rights deal to extend their partnership. Jules Boykoff, a political scientist who studies the Olympics and author of Nolympians, has been following the escalation of calls to cancel the Olympics closely, and pointed out on Twitter for Americans that as the president of the IOC, Thomas Bach, arrived in Japan, one of the biggest trending topics on Twitter was Bach, go home. Boykoff wrote in the New York Times last month that the IOC insists that input from Olympians has been centered in their approach to this year's games. Quote, but the most recent Tokyo playbook states that, despite all the care taken, risks and impacts may not be fully eliminated, and therefore you agree to attend the Olympic and Paralympic Games at your own risk. That sounds more like a COVID-19 waiver than athletes first. Boykoff notes that athletes are not required to quarantine upon arrival or even be vaccinated, which which will pose dangers for the local Japanese population. In a video posted to social media, a Japanese protester attempted to snuff the Olympic torch with a water gun in a symbolic gesture, but was quickly and forcefully detained. But as the torch relay made its way to the capital, the symbolic race has been canceled due to rising concerns of infection. So no fans, no torch relay, but that's not all. The Olympics are coming under fire for other reasons as well, including the news that track and field star Sha'Carri Richardson will not not be going to Tokyo after being banned due to a positive marijuana test. The Tokyo Olympics also announced last month that it will ban athletes from protesting during events and medal ceremonies on the podium. So leading up to the Olympics always leads to a lot of dire warnings and risks. But I think it's fair to say it's never been this worrisome or frankly angering. What's more, I'm sure there will be tons of promotional content speaking about how the world is finally coming back together after having survived a pandemic, but we haven't survived it yet. Should the Olympics really come at a cost of 100 deaths a day? To me, that doesn't inspire much confidence in the spirit of the world coming back together. Day by day, it becomes clearer just how much money talks when it comes to the world's biggest sporting event, and no matter what side of the debate you fall on, at this point the Olympics are at least worth questioning, if not downright demanding that they be cancelled. What do you think? Let me know in the comments, and as usual, thanks for watching.